<laughs> All right, let's pretend it's the beginning of the show as I bring up your next comic. If you guys make some noise and clap it up, he will be performing in the Mohican Sun next month. He's a regular all over the city. Start clapping and making noise for my Jacob. <laughs> What's up, everybody? Woo! Yeah. So I, uh, I bumped into a kid I went to kindergarten with the other day. And uh, I got to tell you, it was awkward. I mean, what do you say to someone you haven't seen in 50 years? <laughs> hey, you still like purple? <laughs> now, how's that drinking milk through a straw jammed up your nose working out? Did that relate to a job? <laughs> of course, he looked at me and said, Hey, Mike, did you ever make any friends? <laughs> yeah, that nice, huh? But uh, I was a little anti-social as a kid. I did two tours in kindergarten. And uh, anybody else? Two tours? <laughs> and the school system said I wasn't ready. I mean, ready for what? Declaring my major? <laughs> but I didn't hear any kid during milk and cookies saying, I want to be an orthopedic surgeon. You know, I mean, for Christ's sakes, I could barely tie my shoes. And the teacher consistently wrote on my report cards, Michael lives in his own world. But someday he's going to have an impact on it. Nice. Mussolini and me on the same career path. <laughs> Of course, my parents thought I was irresponsible. They gave me no pets. They said, there's no benefit to Mike Jacobs being around live animals. <laughs> nice, huh? They were wrong. I'm the guy that discovered it's easier to take a turtle out of the shell and put it back in. <laughs> I didn't have to put it back in. Come on, give me a break. I used to go over to my grandmother's occasionally and play with her parakeet. Anybody here have parakeets? Nobody has parakeets. She used to say, if you don't get too close to it, it's a wild animal. Really, Nana, a wild animal. <laughs> Who's going into the jungle at dusk, covered in trees with a dishcloth so you go to sleep? <laughs> <laughs> little parakeet got sick one time, she wanted to bring it to the doctors. I said, Nana, that's a little bit like bringing a disposable lighter in for repairs. <laughs> uh, so I grew up pretty poor, and uh, our method of uh, entertaining was screaming at one another. <laughs> If you don't finish your dinner, you're not going out to dine. God, my mother used to hate when I said that. <laughs> my father once took me to my uncle's to watch The Hunchback in Notre Dame. He said, that's the kind of life you're going to lead unless you start working on your posture. I said, not for nothing, Dad, but I don't know, ringing a bell in Paris at 12 years old? Doesn't sound like such a bad fucking gig. <laughs> my, uh, my dad just turned 94 years old. And uh, thank you, thank you. He did, I did. And uh, I gotta tell you, he's the biggest, hairiest, half Polak, half Russian guy you ever saw in your life. And when I was a kid, he hung around with his six brothers, equally as big, equally as hairy. I was 13 before I realized three of them were his sisters. <laughs> <laughs> my mother was the more creative one. Typical Jewish mother woke me up every morning whispering in my ear, guess who died? <laughs> Now you know what I'm doing standing up here. <laughs> Who died, Mom? She'd say, you know, Dad? Dad? Dad died? No, not Dad. His boss's uncle's next-door neighbor's sister. <laughs> I'd say, you think we're going to have school? <laughs> oh, boy. i got to tell you, somehow he scraped up enough money one summer to send me to camp. I went to camp Shalom. Now, for those of you who don't know Hebrew, and I know Derek's family knows Hebrew. Uh, shalom means a lot of things, it mostly means hello. I went to fucking Camp Hello. <laughs> what could possibly go on at Camp Hello other than 300 little Jews crying for their mother every night? <laughs> My kids go to acting camp, running camp, soccer camp. I go to fucking Camp Hello. And the little brochure said it's run by real Indians. I gotta tell you, I'm no history buff. I don't remember Chief Jerry at Bull Run. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and as far as activities, we had one activity. There was one miniature golf hole. One hole. And like the little putzes that we were, we played it every day, talked about it every night. How'd you do, Mike? I did a pretty good round. I shot a one. How about you? I had a little problem getting off the tee box. I shot a two. Sure about Elliot? Little bastard shot his age, shot a six. <laughs> oh, boy. So I went to a pretty tough high school. 1,700 blacks, two Jews, me and the school doctor. And, uh, and I'm not even sure the guy was a doctor. I mean, every visit to this guy ended in a hernia exam. Can you turn your head and cough, Mike? Hey, Doc, I'm here to get my goddamn eyes checked. <laughs> <laughs> but people are always interested. What was the 
it like being a short little dumpy white Jew going to an all black high school? You know what it was like? It was like being a three legged gazelle at Lion Country Safari. That's what it was like. And the toughest place? The bathroom. That's where all the tough kids hung out. I didn't go to the bathroom for four years. It was the white kids' Bermuda Triangle. You walk in, you may not come out. Where's Mike? I don't know. He took a leak about two years ago. I never saw him again. Uh, but I try to fit in. I went to my junior prom, and I have to admit, my mom and I had a great time. <laughs> my uh, senior year, I got stabbed. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, it was pretty bad. I rushed down to the office, and uh, of course, the doctor took one look at it. He said, it's pretty bad. You're going to need about 35 stitches. I said, what should we do? He said, let's get the hernia exam out of the way. We'll get you an Oscar. <laughs> and that's my time on Mike Jacob.